Hey YouTubers, uh, this is my unboxing of my first telescope. Um, this is the Skywatch of Black Diamond 120mm uh, by 1000mm focal length um, uh, telescope. And I, um, I did a lot of research before I bought my first telescope. Um, I've never had one before and I do photography just as a bit of a hobby and I had a neighbour who had a Casa Grain and uh, a couple of years ago I kind of mounted my camera on it and took some photos of the moon and um, I promised myself I'll one day I'd buy one and today's the day. So it arrived today, it's a, it came with an EQ5 mount, equatorial mount. I'm going to assume who was usually watching this video probably understands most of this terminology. I'm not trying to educate anybody because I'm not very well educated myself as far as astronomy goes. I'm, I'm a novice um, by standards. The um, choice to buy this telescope over something cheaper um, was based on the fact that I didn't want to go too cheap um, where you get chromatic aberration with um, refractors and I didn't want to get anything that um, needed a lot of work to set up. Um, I think the refractor was the best thing for me for astrophotography. Um, it would have been nice to afford the um, EDAPO but um, in the Black Diamond range but as far as the cost for those telescopes, the telescope alone um, goes up to three, four and above thousand um, dollars, especially on the 120mm aperture. I think they're around three and a half, four thousand. Um, this whole package was eleven hundred dollars, and that was not really overspending too much. If I, if I'd gone something a bit cheaper, I might have been like, well, you know, six months later, I have to get something else. So I thought I'd just do a really quick unboxing. Um, I did kind of open it because I was like, where's it? Was I thought that the um, EQ5 was missing, and it was because that was a separate box, and they just confirmed to me that the um, courier separated them. Um, so, we got two boxes, the large one and the little one. So what I'll do is, we'll just go straight to the large one, eh? and then I will go through the little one. Um, this is a paperwork, but it's from Oscopes. Um, <clears throat> and I own a, well what I'm videotaping myself is a, is a Nikon D5300, or if in America, a Nikon D5300. Um, so they give you, um, and I also got the T2 mount from eBay that's coming this week, an adapter as well, um, that you can actually slide the eyepieces in. If you understand astrophotography, you understand you need attachments for your camera body and then also that tube so you can drop in some eyepieces for closer magnification. They've got their whole list here, this free ED. Um, over here, yeah, look, it'd be nice to afford one of those, but I think for a first telescope, the reason I went with a 120, it was, I tell you what, this is the way my thinking was, um, I almost got the ED80, um, which is a, an expensive telescope, but it's, 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 because uh, it's better glass and it's supposed to have virtually no chromatic aberration. Um, having said that, you know, if you're using Lightroom and things like that, it'd be interesting to see how my photos of the moon come out if they do have heavy chromatic aberration, which is the colouring around the moon and whether or not I have to keep hitting the button to get rid of it. But you know what? We're going to find out um, over the coming months. This is um, the largest of its range in this. If you go to the other ones you get 150. Of course then you've got to go to reflectors if you want some massive ones. But for what I want it for, basically the planets, maybe some small nebulas and I'll take me a while to kind of... I haven't got the motor for the EQ5 by the way. Um, I don't know if I'll do an unboxing for the EQ5, but I may do a video with this mounted on the EQ5. Let's have a bit of a look. Um, I'm just going to put it straight out. And I'm just going to just bugger off this box and just rest it down here. I haven't opened this, so I just opened the box previously. Um, it's got a it's already mounted on this, which is really good. Um, it's got a dovetail, uh, which is for the EQ5 and most equatorial mounts. This is just some foam on the back. Just pull this 
here. And um, just make sure you can see it. And it's wrapped really, really well. Of course, if I had the mount, I would just set the mount up first and I could just put this straight up onto it, but I don't. So let's just slowly just have a bit of a peek here. Just being very conscious of not banging this around. Um, like I said, it's not the most expensive type of stuff in the world, but it is certainly um, a nice one. I don't think I can actually rest it on the dovetail. I don't want to um, it to roll. Yeah, you won't actually uh, rest. Um, but I will just kind of just rest it like this. And caps on there, and this is fun. Um, I'm going to take this off, and again, I'll just, I might just leave this underneath. And all the paper here, so I'm just assuming that to get this off properly, you just loosen these up. I haven't actually done this before, so this is like all the first, but I've, I've heard about the quick release. Um, so there you go, so it just flicks over like that. And then you should be able to just do that. Might be easier to get the paper off. Okay, so I'm just gonna just push, pull that out. This actually looks, um, of course what it looks like on the outside means nothing. Um, it's gonna come down to the glass itself. But this <clears throat> does look nice. I, I did a lot of research um, before I basically decided on this particular one. Uh, you know, I considered Cassegrain, um, it's got that little tag on the end. I got it off, there you go. Yeah, it's got a little thing, um, basically, don't point it at the sun. If you're stupid enough to point it at the sun and look through it, you can pretty much kiss your visions goodbye if you didn't know that already. Um, okay, it's not very heavy. I mean, it's, it's got weight to it, but don't, don't get me wrong. Um, this is, it's got the cone in the front. I've noticed that this is not sitting flush. This is not sitting flush, so I don't know whether or not that's just the way it just moved around, but I'm going to have to look into that. Whether or not that should have been pushed on. Um, it's got the front in there. So, and there's the dials in the back. And of course, that's probably for the, um, it'll be in the box, the uh, finder. And of course you've got caps on both ends. I'm just going to throw this back on here. And I'm just going to just put that. It's got some padding in there. And we'll just we'll just clip, we'll just clip this um, back in its mount. It'd be nice if I did have the EQ5. Um, I could just put it on there and I could just kind of fit along with it and set it up. Um, but for now, we'll just leave that like that. And it's got the dial I'm just curious to see how smooth. Yeah, it's not too bad actually. Put this forward here. I'm just going to have a look and see what comes with it. Right. So, two eyepieces. Uh, you get a long eye relief wide angle Super 25. So this is probably the one you probably want to use the most. Because the smaller the number on the eyepiece, the more magnification. So this is a thousand millimeter. So you divide thousand by twenty-five and it'll tell you. Um, I'm not gonna it's 
pretty wide, so it's a good eye relief there. Um, and then the other end, obviously, that's the part that goes into the... Um, we well, won't go in that because that's two inch. Um, it'll go into the um, other... You'll see the 90 degrees. So these should be um, colossal um, from what I was told. I don't know if it actually writes it on there. I thought they would actually say colossal or not. It's also got the, um, the little, just, it just goes forward. But they did say on the website that these are fossil, so I don't know. Um, I was hoping it would actually write that on there. And this is a 10. Um, also says um, that it's got good eye relief. So. This is a Super 10 long eye relief. Okay, so this over here, it's got a little bit of a rubber bandy. I'm not quite sure how this works, but this would actually mount onto um, here. Um, and it'll go, it'll actually go this way. And you get a little knob here. And it just goes in there and then you just um, tighten it, as you can see. And that's where the that's coming. The Pinoscope. Thank you. That's what I'm thinking about. Here it is. Pinoscope is. Um, I did actually look at this earlier, um, and it's got the same little crystal black um, as the outside of the scope. So this actually would just sit. And it just kind of holds it in there. You can just tighten it with these. Okay. So obviously, I need to read. The to make sure that um, I do it. And then you can adjust these screws to line it up. So this has to be lined up, and the way you line it up is you find a stationary object like a street light, you can do it during the day, it's easy. I heard uh, something that's not going to move, um, and then center it in your scope, and then in the crosshairs, and then you can um, find it on here as well until they both meet up. Uh, you get this as well, which I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure it is that maybe what goes behind there if you want to put um, the 1.28, I can't remember, not the 2 inch ones. Um, that's what this would be. So you basically put this on the end of the telescope because if you don't have that on the end, that's if you want to go straight out. Obviously, you have your camera in the middle of. Um, that as well. This is the last thing that comes with it. Um, now this is two inches um, and it's basically your 90 degree. So this part here will go straight in the back of the telescope and, um, and then this part here uh, the eyepieces will sit on here. So you just take this out and then you'd have an eye piece that just sits in there and you can just tighten it with the screws. Um, and that's it. And that's that's everything I got with this, uh, with this telescope. The one thing I noticed that just, I didn't actually get a, a booklet, which is kind of odd. I was expecting to see a booklet, but I guess um, it's not rocket science, right, to put it together. I've watched enough videos, but still, um, a little bit concerned again, uh, there's no scratches or anything on it. A little bit concerned about this over here. As you can see, all that is, it's the, um, what do they call it? Uh, okay, the um, video had cut out after 10 minutes, I think it was the battery, um, and I was just about to start talking about the hood on this uh, telescope. Um, it didn't record it, but I actually did push the hood on. So basically, um, it just wasn't pushed on straight. So there was nothing wrong with it. Um, but that's basically the video. I'm really impressed with this um, scope from what it looks like, the construction. It's very solid. Um, so I'm just hoping that, um, you know, in the weeks to come, it, it actually produces quality images that I'm happy with. Um, you know, so we're going to find out in time. 
But um, my judgment is really based on, you know, the review on this is, this is really just an unboxing. It's, I can't really rate it, but you know, if anyone else has got this already, because I think this obviously is a little bit of an older model, um, by all means, leave your feedback on it. Um, if you have any questions, wherever, but like, you know, I'm new to this, so this is an unboxing of my first telescope, and um, yeah, I'm excited to use it. So, um, have a lovely Christmas, and um, I'll see you guys again.